Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Earlier, I made a video called Which is Correct? which included two actual photos from the ideal national championship where contestants were wiring a grounding electrode system. This connection is the connection made to a ground rod with a ground clamp, which is in this photo from the NEC handbook. You see the arrow, that's the one we're talking about. Basically, it's the first ground rod and a two ground rod system. The video prompted many comments and questions which I'd like to address. The most asked question was around the topic of does the grounding electrode conductor, that's GEC as it's called in the code book, have to be continuous? Or can you stop and start the grounding electrode conductor as in the picture on the right? To answer that, let's look at article 250.64C in the 2020 NEC. Continuous. Except as provided in these articles, grounding electrode conductors. That's what we're talking about. That is the proper name for that ground wire. Grounding electrode conductors shall be installed in one continuous length without a splice or joint. If necessary, splices or connections shall be made as permitted in one through four. Splicing of wire type grounding electrode conductor shall be permitted only by irreversible compression type connectors listed as grounding and bonding equipment or by the exothermic welding process. Two, sections of bus bars shall be permitted to be connected together to form a grounding electrode conductor. Three, bolted, riveted, or welded connections of structural metal frames of buildings or structures. Four, threaded, welded, brazed, soldered, or bolted flange connections of metal water piping. And then in the handbook, there's a note just under this. It says, a building remodeling project or the replacement of existing electrical equipment might necessitate the splicing of grounding electrode conductor. Section 250.64C1, we just went over that. I'll show it to you again in just a second contains the permitted means by which the splice can be considered to be a permanent connection that provides the intended GEC continuity. And then here's the number one that the handbook just referred to. And the next most mentioned problem is that these ground rods were cut at the top. And this is a problem. If you ever cut your ground rods at the top, you will be flunked by your inspector. There's writing at the top of your ground rod that must be present and the inspector must see it. However, these examples are from the Ideal National Championship at Music City Center in Nashville, Tennessee. And it was a simulation. The next most mentioned comment is that these items will corrode. And my comment is make sure that you use a UL listed ground clamp and ground rod which are designed for the purpose and don't cut the top off of the ground rod. There were also comments saying that I should explain why it's wrong to cut a ground wire like this by keeping the ground wire continuous and unbroken. If your intermediate grounding connection is faulty it won't affect the grounding connections further down the chain. If two separate cut wires are used, the faulty connection would render all grounding useless. And I hope that my comments and answers helped you to understand Article 250 of the NEC Code. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.